I recently made a video explaining why the Canon 5D Mark II is one of the best deals on a used camera I have ever seen in my life. Now aside from just singing the praise of the 5D Mark II, my video was suggestive of a much bigger idea, and that is used full frame cameras are now perfectly viable options for photographers on a budget. Just think about it for a second. The Canon 6D now only costs $700. The Nikon D600, $650. The Canon 5D Mark II, I made a whole video about it, now only costs $600. Or you can go even lower than that. The Nikon D700, only $500. Or the Canon 5D Mark I, that only costs about $450 now. It's really incredible that you can get these amazing cameras for well under $1,000. But here's the question. What lens do you get for it? Whether or not you are upgrading from an APS-C camera to a used full frame like I did, or maybe this is going to be your first DSLR period, you're going to need to get a lens to kind of have as your everyday general purpose lens for your full frame camera. You know, kind of like a lens you could just leave on and use in a wide variety of situations and just have as your standard sort of daily driver lens, if you will. And now that's actually a trickier question than you may think, because here's the thing. The majority of affordable lenses, especially ones that were released even slightly recently, are going to be made for APS-C cameras, not full frame. So trying to find a lens that's well within your budget, works on full frame, and is going to be really good is slightly trickier than you may think. So in this video, I'm going to be going over what I consider to be the three best Canon brand lenses that again could be a sort of everyday daily driver lenses for your full frame camera. I'll be going over the pros and cons of each of them, and then explaining at the end which one I would personally recommend most. Now, to start off, we will not be looking at zoom lenses. There will be no zoom lenses on this list. Now, let me explain why, because here's the thing. If you're choosing to spend six, seven hundred, however much, on a used full-frame camera rather than a new APS-C camera, what that says to me is that you're putting getting the best image quality possible as a higher priority than having the most conveniences and amenities. So for me to go recommending zoom, which literally sacrifice having the best possible image quality to have lots of conveniences and amenities, well, that just kind of goes against the spirit of this video. So for this list, we're only looking at prime lenses. Now, to start off, let's talk about the lens that I'm sure everyone guessed would be on this list, one of Canon's fast 50mm primes, the 50mm f1.8. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at the 50mm f1.8 Mark II lens. Now, the reason I'm recommending the slightly older Mark II rather than the newer one, which has better build quality, and upgraded focusing system, a closer minimum focus distance, is that here's the thing. That lens is objectively better, and if you want to spend the extra money on those new features, by all means do it. It's a great lens, but it doesn't actually increase the image quality. That's the thing. You're paying more money, but you're still getting the same optics. And as I've kind of suggested, the whole point of this video is getting the best image quality for your dollar. So from that perspective, the 50mm Mark II is still the lens to go with. Now the first pro of this lens is, of course, the price. This lens is absurdly cheap. At this point, you should be spending at most, at most $80 used in good condition for one of these. I bought mine for about $80 used. I have no idea what this went through in previous owners. It may have been abused. It may have been barely used whatsoever. Anything in between. All I could tell you is I've used this lens for years and it has worked perfectly. It's incredibly reliable. It's given me great image quality. I seriously cannot imagine any Canon photographer not having this. It's so cheap and gives you so much, it's almost inconceivable to not own one of these. Now the second pro we're going to talk about is actually the maximum aperture. Of all the three lenses we're talking about today, this one actually has the widest maximum aperture. None of the other lenses actually will go down to f1.8. And that's a really, really convenient feature, again, especially since we're looking at this from the perspective of an everyday lens. That ability to get that much more light gathering is very, very helpful, especially when you consider that the image quality is still really good at f1.8. Don't get me wrong, it gets a lot sharper as you stop down, but for the most part, you'll be getting more than good enough image quality at f1.8 for most situations. Now for the cons, though. And the first and most obvious con is the build quality. This is the cheapest, most plasticky, most low-end feeling lens of any lens that I'd actually recommend. Because, yeah, sure, there are cheaper lenses out there, like 18 through 55 kit lenses, whatever, but those aren't lenses I'd recommend. Those are awful. But of the lenses that are actually good, this is without a doubt the cheapest feeling, by a wide margin. And the biggest defender of this entire lens is easily the manual focus ring. I am not exaggerating when I say that it is the single cheapest part of any Canon lens I have ever touched or used or looked at or thought about in my entire life. I genuinely, genuinely remember having McDonald's toys that feel better built 
than the manual focus ring of this lens. Now, like I've said earlier, though, this is a reliable lens. It has worked absolutely perfectly. I've used it very, very thoroughly, and it has never stopped working in any way for a single second. So it is reliable, but this is not an L lens. Very far from it from the perspective of build quality. Now, the second con of this lens is actually the focal length. Now, don't get me wrong, 50 millimeters is a great focal length. It's one of the all-time classic field of views in all of photography, but... From the perspective of a sort of general purpose lens that you could potentially be using like every day you're doing photography, it's just not as versatile as the other lenses we'll be looking at today. The other two are just going to have noticeably more versatile fields of view. Don't get me wrong, this is still definitely a general purpose lens with this nice standard focal length, but it's not going to be able to cover things like landscapes, group pictures, architecture, the way the other two lenses will. The next lens we'll be talking about is the Canon 35mm f2. Now this is not the newer version with image stabilization. This is the much older one. Now this is the lens I have always thought deserves way more attention than it gets. It is a really, really good lens. One of the ideal general purpose lenses for under $500 you could ever want. And with that, the first and most obvious advantage of it is, let's be real, 35 millimeters is the perfect general purpose focal length. Not including zoom lenses or anything like that. If you're looking at one single focal length, one single field of view, nothing beats 35 millimeters. Plain and simple. And not only does that make the 35 millimeter f2 the best full frame field of view of any of the lenses we're talking about today, but you have to remember, I'm guessing that at least a couple people watching this, like myself, upgraded from APS-C to full frame. And if you still have your APS-C cameras as a backup camera or whatever like I have, then the 35mm is by far, by far, far, far the best lens we're talking about today if you're going to want to use it on your APS-C camera as well as a full frame. The next advantage of the 35mm f2 is actually going to be its minimum focus distance. Of all the three lenses we're going to talk about today, this has the closest minimum focus distance at 25 centimeters. Now that's actually surprisingly close, especially considering how old that lens is. Most comparable prime lenses from the film era like that could only focus as close as one foot, but the 35 could, could focus noticeably closer. In fact, that's as close as some more modern 18 through 55 kit lenses. And as I've said, basically the only thing I like about the 18 through 55 kit lens is the fact that they have a very close minimum focus distance. Now, unfortunately, though, there are some drawbacks to the 35 millimeter prime lens. The first is unfortunately the price. This is by far the most expensive of the three lenses we're going to be talking about today. Unlike the 50mm, which should never cost you more than $100, the 35 will set you back at least $250, but realistically more like $300 or $350. This is simply not as cheap as the other lenses. Now don't get me wrong, if you don't mind spending the extra money, then it very well may be worth it. The advantages this lens has over the others in a lot of situations may make it the one to get if you don't mind the price. But again, this is by far more expensive than the other two lenses. And with that, the second con is actually going to be the rarity. It is simply not very convenient to find a 35mm f2. Not only have I never seen one in any camera store for sale ever, but even online. If you were to look for used 50mm lenses online, I mean there's just practically endless amounts of them on eBay or Amazon or any other website you're going to look at. But the last time I shopped for a Canon 35mm f2 on eBay, I was able to find two of them for sale in North America. Think about that for a second. This is simply not a very convenient lens to buy. If you wanted to buy either of the other two lenses on this list, you could just go buy it within a day. And the longest you'd have to wait is for however long it takes to ship. But the 35mm f2, you're really going to have to kind of search for one of those. Now, the final lens we're going to be talking about today is the Canon 40mm f2.8 pancake lens. Now, this is an incredibly good lens and an incredibly good value. It absolutely had to be on the list. Now, to start off, the biggest advantage of this lens over the other two is the image quality. The image quality on this lens is so ridiculously good, I simply do not understand how Canon managed to sell it for around $130. This easily outperforms several L lenses I've used and much more expensive prime lenses. Not only are you pretty consistently getting razor sharp images all the way open at f2.8, once you stop the aperture down even a little bit, the images become so absurdly sharp it's almost hard to believe. If getting the best image quality possible is your main goal of a lens, get this lens. End of story. Now, the next thing I really like about this lens is, for lack of a better term, 
the pancakeness of it. I love the small size of this lens. One of the good things about that is this takes up no room in your camera bag. Like you could just throw this in any camera bag or even any pocket and just take it with you. It's one of those lenses where it is not a burden to carry around whatsoever, which is a big feat when you consider that most lenses that have as good image quality as this are going to be gargantuan by comparison. Now, the other thing I like about the build quality of this lens is look how small the front element is. It only takes up a very small fraction of the front of the lens. So because of that, it's very, very unlikely that anything will actually touch it, especially compared to other lenses where the front element takes up the whole front of the lens. So if there was like a little bit of dirt or like a bug or something that was going to fly into it, they're more likely to hit the plastic than the glass of it, which adds a very, very nice layer of protection and makes me feel a lot safer. And I won't feel any need to use any sort of filter or lens hood for protection the way I would on any of the other lenses that we'll be talking about today. Now, the first and most obvious con of this lens is it does have the narrowest maximum aperture. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think f2.8 is still a very good maximum aperture. I think that's more than good enough for an everyday general purpose lens. But the fact is, this does have the least light gathering of any of the three lenses we've talked about. Now, if you know you're going to be doing a lot of low light photography or something like that, then maybe it is worth considering one of the other ones. But again, I think as a general purpose lens, I wouldn't worry about f2.8 too much especially when considering that you'll want to stop this lens down to get that insanely good image quality. And now, the final con of this lens. Honestly, I had a lot of trouble thinking about a second con for this lens. This is an incredibly great, well-rounded lens. But the thing I thought of was the manual focus. Now, it's not bad, it's not broken or anything, but it's kind of annoying. Now, this actually has a fully electronic manual focus, so the manual focusing is not a mechanical action. It's purely digital. So you really don't get that much tactile feedback when you're manually focusing the way you do on the other lenses. Now, maybe some people like that. Maybe some people don't mind it. And again, I don't think that's too big of an issue, but it's definitely my least favorite lens to manual focus of the three. Now, another problem with the manual focusing with that is that you can't actually manual focus when the camera is turned off. Since it's a digital action, it requires power from the camera to manual focus. And, you know, that's not a big deal, but, you know... What if your camera's low on batteries and you want to look through the viewfinder and just focus and compose your image without wasting any of the camera's batteries to turn it on? That may sound pretty situational, but if you're using the camera on a daily basis as like an everyday lens, that could get annoying over time. Now, as you may have been able to tell, considering how much trouble I had thinking of a second con, or really even any cons for the 40mm, the 40 is my choice as the best everyday daily driver lens for budget full frame. It, it just has to be this. Incredibly good image quality. Wonderfully convenient build style, an insanely, insanely good price of less than $150. It's one of those lenses where you can't afford to not own it. If you have a Canon full-frame camera, not owning this lens is just absurd. Now, don't get me wrong. If you look at it as an overall package, the 35mm may be a better lens with a closer minimum focus distance, more versatile focal length, and wider maximum aperture. But you have to remember, it, that lens could very well be twice the price of this one. And let's be real, it's probably not twice as good. So if you're looking at this from the perspective of value for your dollar, nothing beats the 40 millimeter, period.